Hey there, it's Cass. Today I want to share one of my favorite villains from my D&D campaign with you. Recently in the campaign, she's made a reappearance after not being seen for quite a while, and I decided to update her look to go along with it. She has what I think is a really neat story and one of my favorite designs that I've ever made. So let's jump into it. Okay, so with any amount of luck, you should have just seen a very nice new intro and also this fancy new layout that should be on the screen right now. Hopefully. My computer is a piece of garbage and I've been having rendering issues all day. <laughs> so if you don't see any of that, uh, that means that my computer has defeated me and I'm a loser. Anyway, I can't wait to share this character with you. Her name is Dinah and she's an Aladrin wizard NPC in my D&D campaign. I think I've mentioned D&D once or twice on this channel before, but for those of you who don't know, I've been an avid Dungeons & Dragons fan for about five years, and I've been DMing my own original campaign with a group of my closest friends for about three now. One of my players, named Joe, actually came up with the name of our party. It's called the Foolhardy Five, after the five original party members that we had. And in the spirit of that, we usually call the campaign itself the Tales of the Foolhardy Five. Although, the name doesn't really fit anymore, we actually have seven members of our party now. Along with the fact that my party seems to have a knack for adopting every single NPC that they've ever met ever in their lives. <laughs> Honestly though, I really love our party and every single interaction we have every game seems to only get funnier and more heartfelt, which I really appreciate. The players in this group, like I said, are some of my closest friends, and honestly, not just for them, but I think for me as well, this game has been a way for some of us to come out of our shells. And I just want to take a second to thank all of my players, because I really love you guys, and you mean everything to me. Seriously. So with the sappy stuff out of the way, let me introduce Dinah. As I said before, Dinah is an Eladrin wizard. She lives in the capital city of the Feywilds in my campaign, and has studied various types of magic since she was really little. She also grew up being kind of a nerd and didn't really have many friends because of it. She's very awkward in social situations. But she did have an incredible gift for the magic arts, and went on to study at the Fey King's Magical Academy at a very young age. Originally, she was hoping to gain an audience with the king himself and have him tutor her personally. It's around this time that she started delving specifically into time magic, which happens to also be the focus of her wizard subclass for those of you who are familiar with the Chronergy class. Hoping to learn more about time magic and how it affected the different planes, Dinah studied and did many magical experiments outside of the various portals into and out of the Feywilds, as well as doing serious research into the secret hidden temple said to be located somewhere within, housing an old and ancient spirit of time. It was at this point that she met one of our player characters, rather calamitously at that. One day while examining a portal, a young elf girl flew out of it, dazed and confused, and nearly knocked Dinah off her feet. Dinah was shocked and unsure what to do with the poor girl, but helped her up and took her back to her dorm in the stupor that she was in. Once she had fully come to and calmed down, she explained that she was lost and had been wandering the forests of her home before falling into a circle of mushrooms, and then just woke up where she was. This new elf's name is Ashrin, and she's played by my friend Joe, and he does a fantastic job of it. Ashrin is a ball of snark, and I would die for her. But with no way of returning home on her own, and the laws of the Feywilds explicitly stating not to simply open portals in or out of the Feywilds for outsiders, Dinah suggested that Ashrin seek an audience with the Fey King Oberon for help instead. Now, I think I know what some of you are thinking, which is, Cass, this doesn't sound like the story of a villain. What in the world are you doing? <laughs> Let me explain. Dinah and Ashrin became close friends after Ashrin's audience with the king. He agreed not only to help her, but took an interest in her druidic magic, letting her stay in the same dorm as Dinah while he taught her to control it, so one day she could return home. You see, in my homebrew world, druids are exceedingly rare, as their magic comes from nature, and nature was created specifically by the gods, so the fabric of the universe itself flows through druidic magic. Dinah initially felt jealous of Ashrin, but overall was overjoyed to have her new friend beside her. 
The two of them grew quite close, and Dinah began to have more romantic feelings for her new companion. She knew these feelings would only ever be unrequited, however, as Ashran and the King had become, well, let's just say, more than friends. It seemed as though Ashran was spending more and more time after lessons with Oberon, and soon it felt more like the dorm they had shared was empty more often than it was filled. Dinah was sad. Not out of jealousy or hatred for Oberon, but simply that Ashran didn't seem to have time for her anymore. This worsened greatly one morning, when Dinah awoke to find that Ashran was nowhere to be found. She didn't attend class, she didn't even tell Oberon himself where she had disappeared to. Ashran had always had trouble opening up about personal things, but she didn't even leave a note. Filled with a new kind of loneliness, Dinah sought an audience with Oberon for help in the throne room of the Autumn Citadel, the palace of the king in the Feywilds. She couldn't just accept that her only friend had left her like that, could she? She had spent months, even years, learning alongside and becoming friends with Ashran. She couldn't accept that Oberon knew nothing, or that Ashran would simply disappear for no reason without telling anyone. Unfortunately, their meeting was cut short. A strange, dark figure stepped into the hall during their talk, with a plethora of fire elementals following in his wake. Something was wrong about him. His skin seemed to move, as if it were a glitch on a computer screen, and you could not make out any distinctive features about him. It took little effort to surprise them, and Oberon and Dinah fell quickly to his attack. With the two of them laying on the floor severely injured, he gave them an ultimatum. Surrender the Feywilds to him, or die. Dinah did the only thing she could think to do in that moment. Picking up her wand, she tried to blast the figure with everything she had. But it was no use. He caught her spell in his hand, crushing it as if it were nothing. Approaching her, he lifted her by the throat. But he hesitated. Sensing her powerful time magic, he decided that for her, there would be a fate worse than any death she could imagine, as well as finding a usefulness that she could provide to him. Using the corruptive magic he held, he altered her memory, taking her feelings of betrayal and loneliness and forming new ones to replace them. Happy memories became filled with hatred and disgust. Not only did she feel abandoned, but she now had false memories of being left behind, mistreated even, by her dearest friend. Filled with a new will bound for revenge, Dinah assisted this mysterious figure, chasing after Ashran, who had now met up with the rest of the party. You see, the real reason Ashran left the Feywilds so suddenly were the nightmares she had begun to have. Ashran was plagued with prophetic nightmares of the world coming to an end in a wild burst of flames and destruction. She left home without thinking, looking for any answers she could to stop it. Little did she know, she would end up running back into her dear old friend Dinah, but much different than before. The party has encountered Dinah a few times. Once was at the very beginning of the campaign, the first time that Ashran had seen her since being at home with her in the Feywilds. This shocked Ashran as she watched her dearest friend kill the Grand Padisha of the Elemental Plane of Water. Ashran had never known Dinah to be cruel, and was even more confused when she accused Ashran of being a traitor. She challenged Ashran that day, telling her to return home, and that she might find it a very different place than before. Worried for her home and her people, Ashran returned to the Feywilds to find that Dinah and the mysterious figure who had corrupted her had taken it over, and... Oddly enough, turned it into some kind of casino. The entire city was filled with games, and it seemed like the poker chips being used as currency did more than what normal money did. By betting or losing chips, you bet your health, your physical traits, even your five senses. You could even lose your magical abilities from losing them. Realizing that Oberon must have been captured, the party sought out a way to stop whatever was happening to the Feywilds. With the help of the spirit of a magical lake, they repaired Oberon's broken sword, and defeated Dinah to free him. During the fight, Ashran tried to call out to her friend, and it did cause her memories to revert for only a moment. But it was to no avail. The magic that was holding her was too strong. At the end of the fight, that same mysterious figure appeared before the party, leaving them with an ominous message before disappearing along with Dinah. 
It's been many months both in-game and out-of-game since that moment, and the party has recently made it to the elemental plane of Earth. You can kind of tell that this campaign focuses around the many different planes of existence. They approached the Palace of the Earth Plane, hoping to create an alliance with the Great Khan who resided there. But, much to their surprise, the Great Khan was not alone when they found him. Dinah, as well as many of their other enemies throughout the campaign, were there waiting for them. And it almost seems as if they're all working together. Whatever Dinah's fate for the future may be is up to the players in my campaign. There is still so much of her mystery that's left to unravel, but I think that's it for now. I'll leave you all to think about that for the next video. Here's the final product.